I just love Judicial Watch. We're doing this great work for clean elections, and I know you're all concerned about election integrity, uh, but we're doing what we can under the law to fix it. Judicial Watch, again, is a national leader in trying to preserve free and fair elections here in the United States. One of the key ways we do that is by trying to enforce the National Voter Registration Act, which is a federal law that in part requires states to take reasonable steps to clean up the rolls. And because the left has zero interest in making sure election rolls are clean, because in my view, they want to be able to steal elections, it's been up to Judicial Watch to actually enforce the law. And thankfully, the law allows for private aggrieved parties to try to enforce the law. And Judicial Watch had filed the first lawsuits in the history of the law at, in terms of private enforcement. And we were quite successful in, in um, getting Indiana and Ohio initially uh, to clean up their roles after our litigation. I think we just ended the lawsuits or settled up there. Uh, I think we settled in Indiana. And then um, Ohio did what we wanted to do, so we ended the lawsuit. No, excuse me. We settled in, uh, yes, we settled in Ohio and Indiana did what we wanted them to do. Because the Ohio settlement was challenged by the left and the Supreme Court upheld Judicial Watch's analysis. And so we sued in California, we sued in Kentucky, we sued in North Carolina, we sued New York City. And we've been successful in all those jurisdictions. New York City settled with us. They removed 440,000 names from the rolls in the last year. The big, first big settlement was in, New York, uh, was in California, Los Angeles County, 1.2 million names. North Carolina, a few hundred thousand down near, 400,000, I think, or so. Kentucky, the name's at least 250,000, probably 500,000 as a result of a consent decree. And Colorado settled with us as well. They removed um, a bunch of names. And we just settled this week with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, who... Um, admitted in court filings that it removed 178,000 names. And uh, so that happened after we warned them about what was going on. The litigation continued, and we finally settled uh, in a way that commits Pennsylvania and five key counties to extensive public reporting and statistics regarding the ongoing voter roll cleanup efforts there for the next five years, along with a payment of $15,000 to Judicial Watch. It doesn't cover all of our legal costs, but it's significant. I think it's a nice chunk of change, especially since we're a nonprofit. Otherwise, we'd have to raise it from you in order to help pay our, defray our legal costs. In November 2021, Judicial Watch filed an amended complaint. We had filed an earlier complaint, I think, in 2020 or 2019. And uh, the counties we had targeted, we said, you know, you're not removing names. And the county said, Judicial Watch is wrong. And we said, we're not wrong. Look at your federal data reporting. And they said, oh, well, you're wrong because we reported wrong information to the federal data. We actually did what you wanted us to do. I'm like, well, well, well. I mean, that's, that's the way Pennsylvania had approached this initially. So we caught them giving the wrong information to the feds, and they blamed us for that. I love it. But nevertheless, there were other counties who still were not cleaning up their roles in a way that we thought was appropriate and certainly not reporting in a way that the law required. You know, if they're not reporting, if they're not telling us what they're doing to clean up the roles, how do we know if the voter rolls are clean? So despite our asking them and warning them about voting, uh, the cleaning up the rolls, and then, then trying immediately almost to remove 178,000 uh, names, uh, we still had to kind of battle them in court, and we finally were able to settle. So to their credit, they settled with us. Now, you know, I can complain about the roles not being clean, but I think it's very interesting that these liberal jurisdictions, I mean, none of these jurisdictions want to be sued by Judicial Watch. I, mean, I don't know if Kentucky is a liberal jurisdiction. Colorado, it's mixed. But New York City, you know, they're not fans of Judicial Watch. Los Angeles County and the state of California are not fans of Judicial Watch, but they know what the law is. And so, to their credit, rather than continuously and maliciously waste taxpayer dollars, 
they settle and agree to abide by the law. And the law generally requires, this is pretty simple, the fact that it's not being done or it's not being tracked appropriately is not excusable, especially uh, in this day and age. Um, if you don't show up to vote in an election, uh, typically a federal election, typically the uh, state covered by the National Voter Registration Act or the county uh, is supposed to send you a postcard. Hey, let's say it's me. Hey, Tom, where are you? You didn't vote last time. Are you still at your address? Let us know. And if I don't respond over the next two federal election cycles, meaning the next four years, or otherwise vote, they take my name off the rolls. The assumption is I've moved away or died or otherwise became ineligible to vote. You know, it's a simple process, and uh, we have to sue oftentimes to get them to follow it. I mean, sometimes they send out the cards and don't remove the names, or sometimes they don't send out the cards at all. So Pennsylvania has agreed in this settlement agreement to publish the total number of registered and eligible voters, active and inactive, meaning those who have fallen away and aren't voting anymore, in the five counties by June 30th of each year on, a on their Department of State's website, the Pennsylvania Department of State's website, for the next five years. So every June 30th, we're going to get this specific reporting that otherwise is really quite difficult to get. It also agreed to publish the total number of address confirmation notices, those, those postcards I'm telling you about, sent to registered voters and the number returned as undeliverable or not responded to. So if you get the, if we send the postcard or we get, you know, they send out the postcard and it's returned as undeliverable, it suggests someone's moved and it's obviously not responded to, it further suggests someone has moved and is no longer eligible to vote in the jurisdiction. It will also publish the total number of voters removed from the registration rolls on the account of death or for failing to respond to an address confirmation notice and failing to vote in the two most recent federal general elections. So we're going to get details about how they're cleaning up the rolls in Pennsylvania and we'll be seeing if they're not doing what they're supposed to do, obviously we can uh, take legal steps to ensure that happens. So this is just a great outcome because, you know, we, we send the notice letters. This is what happens. We send notice letters. And thankfully, even the notice letter results in voter rolls being cleaned up. In Pennsylvania and Allegheny County, uh, one of the notice letters, uh, and we never sued Allegheny County because this is how they responded. Um, they removed immediately upon receipt of our letter 69,000 outdated uh, registrations. According to a January 14th uh, CBS News report, this mountain, this mountain of faulty registrations has now courted the attention of the conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch. David Voy, elections manager for the county, told CBS, I would concede that we were behind, are behind on culling our roles, and that this had been put on the back burner. And then they later confirmed to Judicial Watch specifically uh, that the removals had occurred. So we were right. And we didn't have to sue Allegheny County. We just had to send them a letter saying, we looked at the numbers there. You're not cleaning them up as there's, you're supposed to. Now, with this mass use of mail-in balloting uh, to, um, to vote, we obviously need to doubly make sure the voting rolls are accurate. You don't want to be sending content ballots or certainly someone who's on the name on the list that becomes an opportunity for fraud because if someone's on the list who shouldn't be there someone can more easily vote in their name let's say they've moved right and someone moves into their place they get material suggesting they're still getting mail for instance you know joe smith you're still there and you know the other guy says well joe smith isn't here i'm going to vote in his name but that's why you got to clean up the rolls. The reason the law requires to clean up the rolls isn't because they're, you know, the feds are being jerks. It's because they recognize dirty voting rolls can mean dirty elections. Cleaner voting rolls mean cleaner elections. And as a result of Judicial Watch, we're going to have cleaner elections in Pennsylvania, in Colorado, in New York, in California, in North Carolina, and in Kentucky. I think I'm getting all the big ones. And of course, you know, we've sent out warning letters to many other states that have resulted in cleanups. 
Florida, for instance, they cleaned up a ton of names after we alerted them to issues. Texas cleaned up a bunch of names after we alerted them to issues. So this is all just great, isn't it? I mean, because no one else is doing this. The Justice Department, I mean, under Trump, they helped a little bit in Kentucky, but didn't do much else. Uh, the Biden Justice Department is completely AWOL when it comes to enforcing election integrity. They are actually on the other side legally, suing people who want voter ID. They're not going to be cleaning up the rolls. So this is all just great work. Pennsylvania election rolls are cleaner and will remain cleaner thanks to Judicial Watch. This federal lawsuit settlement is good news for voters in Pennsylvania who want to ensure that only eligible voters are on voter rolls. Judicial Watch's remarkable run of litigation successes resulted in well over 2 million ineligible registrations re being removed from voter rolls across the nation in the last year or two. 2 million names thanks to little old Judicial Watch. I mean, you want to talk about heavy lifting for clean elections? 2 million names. That wasn't done by the Justice Department. That wasn't done by a political party. That was done by a nonprofit educational foundation, your Judicial Watch. And so there'll be, there's going to be a spate of new uh, data coming out later this year. And you can be sure if states and counties aren't cleaning up the rolls as the law requires, as indicated by the data they're producing to the federal government and other analyses we bring to bear, but we're going to do more. So more is coming. But the good news is, you know, you do enough of this, the jurisdictions begin to take notice saying, well, why don't we just do what we know we're going to get nailed on if we don't do it? So it's a significant significant public benefit, uh, public interest benefit. So um, a lot more coming also on election integrity. We still have this big case in Illinois that we're pursuing over the Illinois um, state law that allows the counting of ballots that arrive for up to two weeks after election day. Two weeks after election day. And ballots that sometimes can be post, they don't even have to have postmarks. I mean, first of all, does that, does that sound right as a matter of common sense? Of course not. But it also isn't right as a matter of federal law, which is why we have this civil rights lawsuit in federal court that we're pursuing. So we're cleaning up the rolls, trying to make sure elections are run fairly and honestly and in compliance with federal law, and also trying to battle illicit gerrymanders, which allow politicians to rig elections by uh, ensuring that only certain people of a political party are in a jurisdiction and are able to effectively exercise their vote. In Maryland, for instance, they essentially eliminated the ability of the Republican Party to um, uh, be able to contest uh, Congress in any, any, any congressional district contest a race. We came in and said that's not right under Maryland constitutional law, and we won. And they had to go back and rejigger everything. So I just love Judicial Watch. We're doing this great work for clean elections, and I know you're all concerned about election integrity, uh, but we're doing what we can under the law to fix it. And there's a lot of other things that need to be done, and I, would ju I will just want to repeat the reforms that I think need to be made. Um, you know, and if you live in a state where all this is done, more power to you, but I doubt you do. Election day, we should encourage people to vote on election day, not vote for weeks prior to an election and count ballots for weeks after an election. We should eliminate all, but all in an emergency circumstances, mail-in balloting, unsupervised voting, we should require voter ID, and I mean strict voter ID. It can't be, um, well, I have this magazine I received. It has my address. Does that count? No, that shouldn't count. I'm exaggerating, but, you know, a utility bill isn't good enough in my view. It ought to be a photo ID. They should confirm you are a citizen before you're eligible to vote, certainly to register to vote or to vote. That isn't done, for, I, I'm not aware of it being done effectively anywhere. Maybe one state that does it, uh, but practically speaking, it isn't done. 
obviously ballot harvesting, turning ballots over to third parties. That's an abomination uh, for, in terms of clean elections. So those are the other reforms that we should be pushing for and you should be pushing for, in my view, in your individual states. But you can see, be sure from the big picture, you know, where we can at the national and state level, we'll be trying to enforce federal law and other laws as it, as it pertains to clean elections as well. So just great work there. Just great, great work. By Judicial Watch. I, you know, I, I say it because I'm president of Judicial Watch, but, you know, come on. Any citizen should be appreciative of this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.